Okay, we're going to try this again. Y'all, I don't know why, but my phone just completely quit working, and it could be because it's almost dead, but it's not dead yet, so I thought it would work. Anyway, now we're coming on with Chris's phone. Let's just start all over. Hey, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and uh, we're going to review Genesis um, chapters 5 through 7 tonight. And it's a really cool part to read. And as I was telling you earlier, I got cut off. Um, it's so easy to listen to the Audible Bible and cover a lot of ground really quick. So, of course, I listened to it more than once. And then I started reading about commentaries because this has got one part of the Bible that's just very interesting to me. And Chris both. And we've talked about it. And we've talked about the different things that it could mean. And so, um, it's just a really neat part of the Bible. Um, of course, the main thing you should get out of it is in chapter 6, um, it talks about, actually it's chapter 5, it's the linea, uh, genealogy of Adam. It tells you how long all of these guys lived. It was crazy long. And so, they were just able to just multiply and multiply on the earth and they lived a very long time and I imagine they were very wise just like Adam was because remember when Adam was created God created him in his own image and back then um back then um I really believe that that Adam was a uh, very very intelligent and he lived a long time so all of these men that come from Adam um, were the, in the same boat. I mean, they all lived hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, multiplied and had many, many children, okay? The main thing you need to get out of it is the fact that I don't even really know how much time went by, but it had to be a lot of time because it talks about all those people living those that many years, so it was thousands and thousands and thousands years later after Adam was kicked out of the garden and all of these descendants, they were just wicked. They had become so wicked that God was just sorry that he ever made them because, you know, God really intended for man to be uh, like him, more like him, sinless, okay? When he created Adam in the garden, he made Adam so that he would live a very long time and walk with God a long time and talk with God a long time. And um, and then Adam sinned. And so um, what I'm trying to say is God's intentions of Adam being sinless didn't happen because Adam listened to the serpent, well, Eve and Adam, um, and they did what God told them not to do, okay? So, the main thing we just need to get out of this is that back then, people lived a really long time because he intended for Adam to live a very long time, probably so he could walk with him and talk with him, you know, because Adam walked and talked with God in the garden. And so, what happened is these men were just wicked. Now, one thing, one thing that me and Chris really like to, you know, talk about is it says um, in chapter 6, it says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Now, there's two different, there's several different stories. Or several different beliefs. If you when, when you look it up in the concord, it says you know you're going to get a man's version of what he thinks uh, the sons of God represents and the sons of men represents. Some think the sons of God are angels and that they, uh, in fact, chose daughters of men um, and married. Other people believe that there was, you know, that was Cain and Abel, and Cain was evil, and he killed Abel, and then later Adam, I mean, yeah, later Seth was born. 
So then you had the lineage from Cain, which was supposed to be the mean, you know, evil. And then you had Seth's lineage. All right, so some people think that it was Seth's godly, the sons of godly men, took the wives of the, the other uh, lineage just because they were beautiful. They didn't care what they believed and how they'd been raised or whatever. They just, you know, they were just men and they took them to wife. Um, but then you have verse 4 that says there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children, to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, I will say, I've looked this up, and like I said, there's different opinions. But you've got giants in that one verse. You've got giants. And then it says, afterward, sons of God, daughters of men. Okay, so were there in fact giants? Were there, in fact, were the giants the, the children of the intermingling marriages? We really don't know, okay? Not really. Nobody knows. Um, and it says they were mighty men who were of old men of renown. If you look that up in the, in the uh, texts, in the concordances, and that kind of thing, when it says uh, men of old... It means they lived a very long time. They were very, um, and men of renown means that they were very strong. And um, they were just mighty men, like huge and, and lived a long time and fit and, you know, that kind of thing. So um, the main thing is that these men lived so long, y'all. And it says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now that's saying a mouthful. It says plainly that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, so um, the main thing that we need to know, because nobody really, really knows these different things that I've been talking about. The giants, the sons of men, uh, I mean the sons of God, because it's big G, um, and the sons of men, okay? And he does say that it was men that were evil and wicked, and it's, so the main thing that we need to know here, like I said, if God don't spell it out three times, and you don't know it's definite, then it's not doctrine, okay? But what we do know is that he, they were so evil, he wanted to wipe them out, period. So he chose Noah and his family to be the ones who could um, continue God's, uh, I guess you could say, work on the earth. And uh, told Noah to build an ark. And Noah prepared the ark just as God said. And he was obedient and he gathered the animals, and he gathered the extra food, and he loaded him and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and I think it was, uh, I can never remember the, the Jeff, Jessup or something like that, the last one's name, because it's so different than the first two. Anyway, he loaded them on the boat, and the great flood started, okay? And so the rain started pouring in, and the, the the flood started, and it says Noah was 600 years old when the flood's waters were on the earth. And God does say he's going to quit let man live so long, and he's only going to let him live 120 years, okay? 
So, um, the great flood starts and every, and the thing that I found very interesting, and when I read this a couple of times, it says, it is J, J, uh, Japheth. Okay, it says, and they went into the ark to Noah, both two by two, of all flesh, calls the animals flesh just like he calls us flesh. And I know we're different, but he still says flesh. And it says, and they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, all flesh in which the, is the breath of life. And remember, one of the things I said that impressed me when we read the first few chapters of Genesis was that he says he breathed the breath of life into the man. And it says plainly right here that he had put the breath of life in all of these creeping things and creatures and all, you know, and man. So we all had the breath of life that God gave us and he was ready to take it away. But he did say one of everything. And the, it says the waters prevailed 15 cubits upward past the tops of the mountains, the highest mountains on the earth, and everything died. Everything. And it says all flesh died that moved on the earth. The, the birds, the cattle, the beasts, and every creeping thing that creep, crept on the earth, and every man. Every man. Okay? So all, everybody that was on the face of the earth, everything that was on the face of the earth that had a breath of life, was wiped out okay now um, so he destroyed all the living things which were on the face of the ground both man and cattle and creeping thing and bird of the air um, and it says they were destroyed from the earth only Noah and those that were with him remained alive okay and then we stopped there and that's where we stopped reading but I will say this if the sons of man were the angels um if you follow that, uh, the word for giants, it's used in three places, okay? It's used in numbers, in the same um, verse twice, and then it's used here. That one reference is what I'm talking about. No, yeah. So I looked it up, and now y'all know that when the children... When the, when the people left Egypt and they were wandering in the wilderness before they went into, the, went into Canaan, they said that there were giants in Canaan. And there was a family of giants um, that had the, the family name of Anorak or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, um, so they go in and he had three sons. And so they're referenced in Judges and they're referenced in, I believe, Deuteronomy and Numbers and different places in our Old Testament. But um, these giants that were there in this time that we're looking at cannot be the same giants that's in Numbers and uh, because God wiped everything up away okay so um, keep that in mind as well so even if they saw giants were they the same kind of giants I don't know I mean I wouldn't think so because he says he he wiped them out if it were angels um, that had children with um, the son of man um, who's to say I mean this is what I said to Chris I said well if that's so then once Noah was off of the ark and, you know, the world started being populated again, wouldn't the angels just have children with, with man again? Unless God made some kind of way that they just couldn't. Or, I mean, because that means they just, they could do it today. And I don't think that happens myself. So anyway, it's just really weird. And that's what's cool about the Bible. And this is what I tell people. It's okay and it's fine to agree to disagree. But it's not okay to agree to disagree with doctrine. Now, the, the thing that makes doctrine different than what we're talking about with these men and angels is that doctrine are the things in the Bible that God spells out where there's no questions. 
he repeats some at least three times and they're spelled out in black and white so it's not even a matter of interpretation it's a matter of do you be believe what you're reading or not and um, so that's doctrine okay that's where you cannot really agree to disagree you can agree to disagree with other things okay but not doctrine so um, but it's just really interesting and um, you can just read and read and read and, and read all kind of stuff. But the cool thing is, it's reading the, I mean, you can read what people think about it. But the cool thing is to go into Blue Letter Bible and hit those, um, they have little letters for the Hebrew words in, in different uh, Latin and Hebrew. Um, and you can click on them and look at their definitions. And it kind of helps you get an idea of when they when these people wrote that what that word actually meant okay um so anyway that's cool i think i've probably covered enough let me see if she's got anything interesting to say okay the covenants of genesis okay so i think i'll, I'll read these to y'all um in genesis 2 15 through 17 god and mankind are, are the terms. God provides for all man's needs. And mankind is forbidden to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? In Genesis 3, 14 through 21, uh, there's a covenant with Adam. There was the Edenic when they were in the land of Eden. Or Garden of Eden. Then there was the Adam which is God gives a promise of the Messiah and mankind says no requirements but mankind will suffer consequences of sin until the coming of the Messiah okay and then Noah's covenant God will never flood the earth again and mankind no requirements and then there was a sign a rainbow and then um, the Abraham, the covenant of Genesis and with, with Abraham is in Genesis chapter 15. So we'll wait and read that one once we get to chapter 15. Well, I guess I can go ahead and read it because I won't be looking on this page anymore. And it says, in, in Genesis chapter 15, God will make a mighty nation of Abraham's descendants and give them the land of Canaan. And Abraham will walk before God and be blameless. And the sign is circumcision. So, um, according to this, when they were in the Garden of Eden, there was a, a God and mankind, Adam, God and mankind, Noah, God, mankind, and a sign. And in Abram's time, it was God, Abraham, and a sign. So, um, he does give signs, you know, in those later chapters in Genesis for the people, okay? So, anyway, I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's little lesson. And I hope it's made you want to get up and, and read and study that stuff because it's real interesting. And um, I guess that's it. Y'all got it? I, I haven't looked, but I'm, I'm looking at Chris's phone and his phone's like little bitty and it's harder for me to see. So, um, I'm glad y'all are here. I see a few people are here. And um, so, I guess that's it. If y'all got anything interesting you want me to read about that you know something about what we're talking about and you think it's cool, then let me know. Send me a message, okay? Um, so, I guess we can say our prayers. I don't think I've got anything real interesting to tell y'all. Besides, I'm really, really excited to get my dishwasher on Monday. I've washed all the dishes I want to wash. I will say that. My goodness, you go in there and you make a cup of coffee. So I tell you, it's changed me a little bit. So I get up in the morning and I have a cup and I drink my coffee and I rinse it out and I drink my tea and I rinse it out and I drink my last cup of coffee at night instead of messing up two or three. <laughs> oh, um, but I guess that's it. We, um, I've already had my, my latte. You know, I showed y'all that latte I was drinking in the morning. Well, I have one of those at nighttime, too. I have my good coffee in the morning, and every evening, Chris and I both have to have another cup of coffee. And yes, it's strong coffee, and no, it doesn't keep me awake. When I lay my head down, I have a CPAP machine, which probably helps me a lot. 
I have a CPAP, so as soon as I put it on my head, and my head lays down on the pillow, and Chris is the same way. We are asleep within five minutes, easy. Probably between two and three minutes, we're, we're already asleep. So, um, we don't have any problem going to sleep when we drink coffee, like a lot of people would. Well, I guess we can say our prayers, and I hope y'all had a wonderful and blessed Saturday. And uh, me and Chris are getting prepared because we are going to uh, go fishing. So, that's cool. Y'all ready to say our prayers? Oh, um, I know. We can definitely talk a little bit about um, the hurricane and what it has done. And I just feel so bad for everybody in the Bahamas. And I do feel... Uh, I, I think it, you know, it strengthened a little bit once before it got into um, Nova Scotia today. I think it had, and it did some pretty good damage there. And I know that a lot of people have flooding and and things like that that they've had to endure. So we just need to keep everybody in our prayers, and all of those families in the Bahamas in our prayers that are missing people. I just can't imagine. Um, missing family members. That would just be awful. Um, so, let's keep them in our prayers as well. Um, and I guess that's it. Okay? I don't know why, but I don't want to end the, the talk tonight. It's so weird. Every time I say I'm ready to pray, I don't really want to go yet. That's kind of strange. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, with my spirit in y'all. But anyway, so I guess I'll close it. So if anybody has anything important they need to tell me, I'll send me a message. and Maybe it'll make me feel better. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for the beautiful weather we had today. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for making Adam in that garden because if you hadn't made Adam, even if it didn't turn out to be, um, we didn't obey like we should have, um, I thank you for making him because we wouldn't be here without Adam. I thank you for saving Noah and the race. And um, I pray that we, as Christians, through the blood of Jesus Christ, could try our best to uh, read your word and stay in tune with the Holy Spirit so you can live through us. Um, and that you will not be disappointed in, I, in us while we're here on the earth. Um, and I know there's really nothing that makes us good enough but the blood of Jesus Christ. So we, we know, Lord, without him we'll be nothing. Uh, but we just thank you for everything that you do for us, for the grace that you've given us, for the time that we have here on this earth, for the love that you've given us for our families, for the love that you've given us through Christ which is our agape love, and um, help all of those in need through that has endured this storm. And um, if any of those people over there do not know you or your grace or your son, that maybe through all of this that they would hear the truth, open their eyes and ears, and come to know you as their person, Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all, I guess, uh, probably Monday. But now, I don't know if I'll be here Monday night. We have a meeting, I think, Monday night in Cedartown. So, um, I'll try to meet up with y'all Monday morning. How's that? Monday morning. And let's do um, chapters. Let me look and see where I want to go through for Monday. We'll do eight, nine, ten. Let's see, we got, y'all got Sunday, you got two days. We'll go through 11, okay? So we're going to go through the Tower of Babel, okay? So y'all read chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11. And if you're like, oh, that's too much then listen to the audible bible it's really cool and you'll enjoy it okay y'all have a good night i'll see you monday love you bye